Well hello there, Just Will here again, and today is going to be a basic start over of a new series. Uh, Station is currently on sale on Steam, so there's probably going to be a few new players coming to this game. And I want to do a sort of a beginner guide to the game, how to get started, how not to hit, shall we say, what is the metaphorical hockey puck, uh, or hockey puck? The hockey stick uh, difficulty curve that this game has, because you literally just hit a brick wall straight away. There are tutorials in the game which will help with some of the basics and getting things going, but say you don't want to bother with all that and you just want to see the quickest easy way to get yourself established, because some of the stuff will give you the skills, but it doesn't really tell you what order you need to do things in to guarantee you have a bit more of a chance of surviving. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through how I'm going to set up the world. There is also things like mods and things like that. If you find the ore stuff a bit grindy, I would say definitely pick up one of the stationers uh, or mods. This one uh, does work. There's a lot on the workshop, unfortunately, that doesn't work. This one, though, I believe does work. Um, it's from September 20, uh, 14th, 2022, um, from Andy Fritz. That one at the moment does seem to be the one that I've used and does seem to work. There is a lot of po more p popular ones, should I say, that don't work or do work. It's a bit mixed, to be honest. Now, to start a new world, simply just do new world and you have a nice list of all these options uh, that you can choose from. The moon and Europa will have storms, which uh, I'm not going to go over too much here as such, but suffice to say anything outside gets blown away and basic solar panels will be damaged. Uh, minus again is a bit more like the uh, uh, moon scenario, uh, just a lot less uh, sunshine basically. Vulcan is, well, Vulcan, <laughs> a bit hellish. Asteroid belt, I don't know if these ones still work. I think they do, but the, should we say there's a lot of um, ship stuff that was put in the game a long time ago. I don't think it really works, it's really supported. It's a bit of a run theme of the game as such where you will see bits that are a bit confusing, that have been abandoned or are still in the game. Very confused to say the least. So for the start of the series, I'm just gonna go with the moon scenario. You'll then be greeted by a difficulty setting. It's not overly clear again, it's sort of saying like the usual um, uh, basic description here, but there's a few caveats that are very important to know about. So on easy, you can, or you have basically lower food and water rates. You respawn with a full suit with the full equipment included. And you can eat and drink through a helmet, which is quite important if you're new to the game. Um, the other ones, you can't do that. You can change that through custom uh, configurations, which I'll pop a little card in the corner. Basically, I did a video on how to customize that. So if you decide to go down normal and think, oh, this is a bit too hard for me, you can go back and change it and you can customize your difficulty as much as you like. So I'm going to do easy. Uh, just because I highly recommend everyone to start on a very easy run and I'm just going to call this moon easy and we'll get started so you're going to drop into the world and you get the usual um, bump that appears in the corner you can ignore those things so my little uh, lander has appeared in a crater which is not overly great but at the same time it's not the end of the world it just makes it a bit difficult to see it when you're looking around the sun will always go over in a straight arc on the moon so again that's easier for solar tracking later on so the first thing i want to do is just start to build up a basic sort of um well basically a base uh we could put that in this crater but the lander is kinder in the way so we can't really do that we also don't really want to build a resource node because again that gets a bit frustrating later on now there isn't really a nice flat area around here by the looks of things, so we're going to have to sort of try and work within the limitations of the area. There's a big old crater there. Well, I think what I might do is build the, the basic foundations over here. Again, this is quite a rough start. Um, there's not really a great terrain choice, so it might even have to be a bit further over here. Pop my jetpack on with Jay. Let's see. Yeah, I think this might be the best spot here. It's fairly clear, not too much in the way of resources. There isn't craters and stuff which um, we can build into. Uh, in this game, unlike games like Space Engineers, if you've played that before, you can pressurize your environment to the voxels. So if you build a little box around these voxels, it will pressurize, 
which is very handy. Sometimes the game glitches though and we'll lose the what they call the room IDs. Uh, we'll go over all that in a little while. But basically that hasn't happened as much. But if it does happen it can be a little bit frustrating because you lose all the atmosphere in the room. So you come down with a selection of boxes. Uh, each one has kind of a category should we say or a theme. So these are sort of build materials, we've got generators, lathes and things like that. And here are some basic more supplies again, a battery, pipes, things like that. Uh, and sensor as well. We have seeds and things like that. We will not be using them yet. You will also come with some eggs. Now basically these eggs will expire before you get to use them unfortunately. They just always do. Um, it's very frustrating why they do this because by the time you get around to actually hatching chickens out and stuff like that, you're pretty much sort of mid to end game. And some more supplies in here, we've got water and soup. Food is not a problem, water will be a problem. So we get three bottles, plus one on our uh, suit and a tin of soup here. The soup will last us a heck of a lot longer than the water. So water will be the first thing we need to sort out. We've got a selection of paints and things to colour code things with. And we've got, again, some more portable appliances and things like that, which are like hydroponics, portable scrubbers, waters, uh, again, a little bit of water canister. You can drink from this with a setup, but you're only going to get a couple of bottles worth. It just isn't worth it. You're better off going to find some ice straight away. And a couple of small cell batteries. So I'm going to start off with this one. I'm going to grab the frames and I'm going to pop them over here. Um, I might just build it here to be honest, it's going to be a bit closer and I'm going to build it slightly below ground, just here. Now, in the, what we're going to do is actually clear the ground here. So if I drag this belt down, if you hold ALT it releases the mouse cursor and you can then click around on these elements. You can also use the keyboard keys 1 and uh, 6 and that'll open these things up. You can also scroll through and tap F and that'll swap them over if your hands are clear. My hands are not clear at the moment so I'll just clear my hands. In this game it's quirky how you have inventory should we say. You're, you have a left and a right hand and you have all these items in your belt uh, or your backpack. And you can scroll through, select one of them, tap F and that puts it into the slot that is currently selected. You can swap it I believe with E so I can swap between my left and my right hand. Right click turns tools on, tap on R to bring up the properties of the item and I'm going to set it to flatten and now I can start to just flatten this area off because I want to get a nice smooth surface to build on. Now I've flattened a little area, a 3x3 three three area. Now the next thing we need to do is to weld up these frames. So I'm going to put the frames back in the box and grab the iron sheets. At the same time, go into my tool belt and grabbing out the welding torch. This stuff is all kind of covered in the basic tutorial, but a 3x3 three three box is really all you need to start off with. This is going to be just welded up once. You don't want to fully weld it up to the sealed frame. If you just do it the once, you get this sort of scaffolding effect. And from there you can place items on it. And this is going to be the basic, uh, should we say, manufacturing area. So in the area is going to be a solid fuel generator, the arc furnace and a auto lathe, if I remember rightly. I want to call it a manufacturer from playing uh, Satisfactory way too much. It just kind of uh, bleeds over these games do. Yeah, the auto lathe and things like that. So uh, I'm going to start off with, let's say the auto lathe. Let's just put that down because it has a lot of items that are required to build it. Now some items in the game you'll find will just build and be done. And some items in the game will require lots of items. So this one needs lots of little bits and parts to build up. Now you can't see it clearly until you put something in your hand uh, is on one of these tools. So if I just grab the screwdriver you'll see it comes up saying you need a welding torch and two iron sheets. So if we put the weld torch in, turn it on with right click, weld it up. Now it needs four cable coils, and that's just the red wire. And then I believe, memory serves me right, it's the... nope. Ah, my favourite bugbear, plastic sheets. 
where you have to weld them on. I always find it a bit peculiar why you weld um, plastic sheets on, but hey oh. There we go, and now the screwdriver goes in. So this one has four build stages, which is a bit unnecessary. I, I, to, uh, well, to be honest, I do think it would be better if it was just one single step. The solid generator, on the other hand, as you will now see, is... A single step. Straight in. So basically, solid generator, one simple step. No building, no welding, just, yeah. I don't know why, again, some items are instant and some are all these little stages. It's a bit, I don't know, random? Um, like the, uh, you'll find actually this one here, the arc furnace. I believe this one doesn't require welding. Uh, let's just see. I put it, uh, I'll put it here. Yeah, that one's straight away as well. It's a very peculiar um, thing to say the least, but I guess developers had some reason to do these things. We have a basic solar panel which we want to get out because the sun is now shining straight above our heads. And we want the port to go, let's say, probably around here. And that will require a glass sheet. Grab the glass sheets and we'll now pop them on. And there we go. Now it's time to get some basic um, wiring, shall we say, done. Now, you can in theory plug all this in directly, but you'll end up with some explosions, to say the least. The game has a quite detailed power networking system. So you do have to split your networks up in a, in a way. And it's all done through what is called these area power controllers. Or APCs as I like to call them. So each one, of this will basically have a little battery inside of it, uh, which if I grab this and do this, a little battery slot there, and a big old master breaker basically. This is basically going to stop these just sucking down all the power to a degree, but it also means that we can put this energy into a battery, just a basic little battery. It's not going to be great, um, the coal generator will put out a lot more power, but we can have a basic, uh, simple battery storage system going. So I'll pop that in there, and I'll just wire up the rest of this. There we go. So now the power cables are all in. These are now all operable, and we can now start to smelt, or should we say use the furnace to melt down the ores and things like that. Now. This is where we have to get into the next stage. Because now we've got, shall we say, a basic here, or basic structure. But we're going to need some resources to actually start making things. Um, I'm not going to worry about building a actual box or anything like that, or a habitational area yet. Because on easy mode we don't really need to worry, and food is kind of plentiful. So what I want to do is get the water situation sorted out first. That's the top priority I find at the moment. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my mine, uh, the drill out, and I'm going to look for some iron, because that's really the most important resource. And I bet you, yeah, there is some just here, there's some there as well. It's this sort of like, I don't know what you call it, it's not sort of, almost like bronzy sort of colour. So, oh yeah, I've got to remember to switch it back to default. There we go. So if your drill isn't working after doing some flattening, don't forget to put it back to default. And that's under the R button. R for Romeo. There we go. So I've got five stacks. This is where the ore mods do, should we say, make life a little bit easier. Um, I do think sometimes the game can be a little bit too grindy on the ore front. Because um, there's plenty of other things to really get into the game. Um, I think, to be honest, ore and stuff like that should be a bit more plentiful. Um, but yeah, so then you can get into the more exciting parts of the game later on. Because getting a foothold can be a bit difficult, but once you get a foothold, things really start opening up. So I'm going to let this smelt for a little while, and then once it's done, we'll then pop it into the auto lathe, and we'll start making some of the basics we need for uh, putting together. Tell lie, before I do that, I'm going to have a look at the ice crusher, because that's what we need first, uh, which is not available here. Now, I've realised something I made a slight cock up. I should have checked the Wikipedia, which is under F1. 
So under here, we're looking for the Ice Crusher. And this is made in the pipe bender. So I need to make a pipe bender. And the pipe bender is made by the auto lathe, luckily. So I need to make a pipe bender. And from there, we're going to need three iron, one gold, one copper. Okay, so first things first, we've got to build the pipe bender, uh, which is iron, gold, and copper. So we've got some iron, which should be out here. There it is. I'll pop that in here. And now I've got to go find some iron, or some, what was it, gold and copper. So there's some gold, nice and easy to find. And then the copper is sort of like a greeny rock on here. I think is this one here by looks things. Um, no, I think that might be, oh no, it's copper. They look very similar to nickel, which always confuses me. Now, oh there we go. I was then going to say I'm nearly lost. <laughs> it doesn't take me long to get lost. But it is fairly easy to get find your way back because if you go just with your jetpack and get up nice and high, you can normally see quite a way away. Also, a little trick in the game: anything that emits light, you'll find you'll be able to view from quite a distance away. Especially little battery indicators and things like that. It's all to do with the view and distance in the game. Um, it's one of those sort of quirks I always find. So if I do find myself getting lost, I just get up very high at night, turn my light off, and just look for a single pixel that's flashing away in the distance. And you normally can find all these little lights and things like that. As long as something is on at your base, you will find it. Right, I'm going to smelt these down and then we'll get the pipe bender done and I'll start setting up an ice crusher. Well, I've gathered up the necessary resource. I'm just smelting down the gold and I've just realized I need to expand this frame a little bit more to make room for the pipe bender. So I'm just going to add another uh, extra three along this side. Um, the should we say you want to do two three by three grids if you want to have a greenhouse as well uh, for the space for it. You could probably get away with a bit more small space in it, but it does make it a little bit more uh, harder to, should we say, regulate the temperatures inside the space. So hopefully this won't take too much more longer. Um, I might just actually turn it off and manually eject it. So if you turn off the arc furnace, what it will do is finish off its last little bit and it will then eject whatever it's processed. That way we can get cracking on with it as it is now dark. So, I need to make the pipe bender. Hydraulic pipe bender. That's going to take a little while. The battery is getting a little bit low. I haven't actually gone out and looked for any coal yet. I think there was some nearby. Yep, there's some here. I'm just going to grab that and just pop it into the uh, solid fuel generator. 50 grams will last a little while. Again, this is not really, shall we say, super cheating, but if you want life a bit easier, and you want to get into the game, I highly recommend it. Save you sitting here banging head against a brick wall and just dying constantly. Make the game harder once you get the hang of it. So that's going to sit there and charge this up as well. You'll see all these lines moving around all the time. This is actually the gas uh, system in the game. So this is showing that gases are moving out. And because we're on the moon, it's in a vacuum. And you can see that in the bottom right corner, there's lots of little gauges. The one that you should be sometimes keep an eye on is the temperature. It's currently 199 degrees centigrade standing here because there's hot uh, CO2 being exhausted from this. If I go and actually grab my tablet, there it is, and I'll put in the atmospheric analyzer chip, you'll see that there's pollutants as well, or chemical X as I like to call it. This stuff uh, will basically kill plants, uh, will destroy your lungs if you touch it uh, or come into contact with it, even a small percentage. So you have to be quite careful with that. At the moment we ain't got to worry about it because we're in a spacesuit, but that becomes very important later on when you're setting up uh, a base, you want to get your internal atmospherics good, things like that. Basically making habitable spaces. Now this is going to take an absolute age, so we're going to wait for this. And as, that, as I say that, the battery is now starting to run out on my suit. Now having this set up does mean that I can simply grab this, swap my battery out. And then you just keep swapping your battery out. So you keep the cold generator topped up. Your battery's always full. Makes it a bit easier for you. You can run with little batteries. But bear in mind the little batteries won't last very long at all. Uh, where are they? They're in one of these crates. It's always the last one I'm looking. Literally is the last one I'm looking. So these batteries will only last 
a minute amount of time. If I pop one in, you'll see how quick that is dropping its percentage. So these are not really any good for anything other than tools at the best. I'll pop that back in so it stops moaning. So if you are getting in a pinch, yes, that will get you, should we say, out of a sticky situation. But I wouldn't recommend it for any long term use. Pipe bend is nearly there, so we nearly should be done. And then hopefully we can get the ice crusher up and running and get a bottle filler going. So there we are, we have a pipe bender built. Now, this will just keep making another one if we don't stop it. So you must keep an eye on that, otherwise you end up with a base full of random parts. The pipe bender is going to be the same sort of build and steps annoyingly. We don't want to put it here because what will happen is it will eject stuff into the input of that and make a mess to say the least. So I normally give them a good bit of space between each of them. So let's go back there. And it will need again the same sort of materials as the uh, other one. So it should be again iron sheets, things like that. So if I grab the welder, yep, iron sheets in the hand. There we are. Same build and steps as the other one. It's plastic sheets, screwdriver, same sort of steps. If you ever get in a muddle and you're not quite sure, just remember the F1 menu. It will tell you what you need to do and all the steps and what tools you need for each step. Very, very handy little tool to have. So, right. Now we've got that in, we just need to run some cable around. The cable's getting a bit thin on the ground as well, but still got 31. And again, we can make more of it in the auto lathe, but you must bear in mind that you will get less cable with the auto lathe compared to the electronics printer. So you ideally want to be making your cables with the electronics printer rather than the auto lathe. Now, this is where things get a little bit frustrating for the early game for me, because you have to eject the ingots out and effectively sneak and net them over to the other machine. I do have a script that I have made that is fully automatic and will move ingots from one machine to another. And I'll pop a link, uh, well, I'll say I'll pop a link in the description, but to be honest, it's way out of scope at the beginning. Um, but that will be something that I will build in this series. Now we need the ice crusher. Here we go, build one of those. And we're going to need a few other elements to go along with it. So the ice crusher is going to be probably, I would say, hmm, we put it in here. Yeah, I think here might be a good spot because it won't get in the way of that shoot too much as enough of a gap. This again requires multi-step building, so we've got to again do the same thing. Iron sheets in our uh, right hand or left hand, either way round. The game doesn't make you have a left or right hand, luckily. Just make sure you turn this off, you don't want to have a hot pocket. Last thing it would do is walk into your base with a weld torch going and just fill it full of pollutants. So there we go, that one's now done. I just needed the cable again, so bring it back out. Run a cable along, and there we go. Now, we need some water ice and a few other bits of pipe. Now, the pipe on the, should we say the pipe we're gonna need. There is now two different types. There's a liquid pipe and a standard pipe. We're gonna need liquid pipe for this. Luckily in the game, there's only one liquid type. The only thing is I would recommend having a insulated pipe. Now, the only problem is we need steel and steel we need to have a furnace for. So that's a quite a bit further down the road to say the least. We can do it with a, what was it called? A standard uh, pipe, but it will radiate heat out. So you do have to bear that in mind. So if I build box and liquid pipe and just build a couple of those, and then we need a bottle filler, bottle filler. There we go. We need some silicon anyway, so I'll go and go grab some silicon. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to pop it here. So I've just gone a little bit of distance away from the base just to grab some silicon. And it's this sort of, white rock it's like white silica now for water ice it's a bit more tricky because we've got nitrogen ice now in the game which is this stuff here uh, if i can get it to come up with a label come on there it is nitrice uh, i think that's also nitrice that's nitrice because it's like um 
well, like sheets, basically, that are sort of uh, frozen together. This, I believe, is oxide. Yep, oxide, because it's bluer. So water ice is basically similar to that, uh, but lighter than the oxide. And this is one of those little bugs that you always have in the early game. Find in the water. Find in the water. Sometimes you can be lucky and you spawn in right next to water. Other times, like my, well, like I am most of the time, spend most of the time looking around trying to find water ice. Uh, that's not a hole, don't worry about that. It's just the level hasn't loaded in, so as you get closer, hopefully, there it goes. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll just disappear into the abyss. So, yeah, I'm going to have to have a little rummage around, see if I can find some water ice. Well, it's safe to say I shouldn't be buying a lottery ticket this week, because I'm having very little luck finding ice today. And this sometimes happens. You end up loading, or doing a new run, and you end up with just oxide and nitrite, or nitrice, around. But yeah, I'm not seeing any water ice whatsoever. Oh, I think I might have found some water ice. You can see it's slightly different. Yeah, that's definitely water ice. At last, that took a lot longer than it should have done. I'll grab two lumps of it. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll dig out the rest of it, the area, so it's then visually obvious again. Hopefully. There we go. Because you want to expose it again, another part, because there's more to the, um, these nodes, shall we say, than what you see on the surface. As you dig down, there's normally about 10 to 20 chunks. And you always want to leave a little bit exposed just so you can come back to it later on and dig out some more. I'm going to open this area all up, make it nice and obvious for me. So then when I come searching for it later on, I know which way to go. I'm also going to take a bearing. So the base is in that direction. That's 208 degrees. So basically it is in, yeah, that roughly that direction, uh, which would be whatever 180 is take away. <laughs> Mental arithmetic is not very good for me. That'd be 30 degrees. Am I right? Yeah, 30 degrees into it. So 30 degree head in to get more water. There we go. So now the water bottle filler is now being built. Turn it off so I don't make another one. Pop it in here. It's a bit of a squeeze. And just pop some cables in. Now, what we want to be very careful or very aware of as well pop that on because it has to be powered and I pop this one on we are going to end up with shall we say blown pipes if we're not careful so what I'm going to do I'm going to consume the water now pop this bottle in here and then what I want to do is from here if I alt click on this it brings up this extra menu which I can then do split one and I put them in one at a time. And there we go. It's slowly filling that up. Because we don't want to leave too much in the pipe. Uh, did that go in? Ah! We've run into a situation that I always forget about. The sun. The sun is our nemesis in this in scenario. Every time I split one into my hand, it will disint uh, disintegrate, dissolve. So that just disappears every time. So what I have to do is be really quick to put it in. Because if it sits around in my hand for too long, the sun will make it melt and there'll be nothing left. And there we go. We now have water again. This water pipe will get cold. And eventually, when it drops below freeze... Uh, oh no, wait. Maybe not. I mean, it's dropping in temperature slowly. But it's very slow, so we might be okay. We might not lose too much, but it will eventually lose temperature because of the radiated heat. The game used to not have this. Uh, it used to just be convected heat only. But because we've got radiated heat now, this pipe will eventually drop below zero. When that happens, any water in the pipe will turn to ice instantly and will destroy the pipe. So... Bear that in mind, or it'll start to take damage, so. so you have to bear that in mind. You just don't want to have loads of water sitting in that pipe. Just have to sort of balance it out. Right, now, I think, now we've got water established. That will do for the beginning, shall we say, because this 
is the most important thing I find. Getting a stable source of water. Power is stable. We just now have to basically now start working on to the next stage, which at this point would be scaling up the manufacturing area. Let me turn this off. All right, so the next step would be to scale up the manufacturing area. So getting all the machines built. There's two more machines that need to be built effectively. Well, I say two. One is quite important with the electronics printer. The tool printer we don't really need. Um, so yeah, tool uh, the electronics one would be the next one we want to build. And we'll need to also scale up the solar panels and the power and things like that. At the moment, we don't need to worry too much about atmospherics, things like that, because we do still have a massive tank on the side of the lander here. Uh, somewhere around here. There it is. Where we can just simply release that, pop our oxygen bottles into that, and that'll refill them to the setting on there, which I think is like 8 megapascals, something like that. Yeah, 7.7 .7 megapascals. So that'll fill the bottle up instantly to that pressure. So we've got plenty of time when it comes to oxygen. It's not something that I would say is worth worrying too much about. The most important thing will be water, which we're now done, and manufacturing, and then looking to probably getting food up next. So for the next episode, we'll be scaled up the manufacturers, and I'll catch you all then. Bye for now.